Basically, this is the gallery for the Big Bend Arts Council. It's called Gallery on the Square, although it's no longer on the square. It's on Holland, but they don't call it the Gallery on the Holland. So we have a tremendous amount of artists in Big Bend. You can't kick over a cactus without an artist screaming at you, screwing up the picture. <laughs> It's nothing short of a rare privilege to be given a personal tour of this art gallery in Alpine, Texas by someone like George Covington. After all, he is on the board of directors for the Big Bend Arts Council, and Holland Avenue is a long stretch of galleries and shops, and George shows us the way, joined by his assistant, Melissa Amperon. She works for me two to four hours a week, and all we do is laugh. <laughs> so consequently, I bring my own audience. We have uh, the Ivy's Emporium, which is one of the most unique places you can go into. How did you know that we were standing in front of Ivy's Emporium? Because I have opened every door between the corner and here to find it before. I just realized something. I'm being given a tour of Alpine by a blind man. Yes, right. Well, it, I won't charge extra. Well, this is a little... <laughs> Isn't this kind of silly you're, you're showing no, me No, I have an incredible sense of direction. All right, I'm going to trust that, George. But, but, Let's but, continue. But, okay, okay. Legally blind, you have to have some degree of eyesight. Totally blind is you're blind. So that's it. It's a legal definition, literally. You who Kelly. This is a bill for Bill. His P.O. box is 376 to Lingua. Mine is 376 Alpine. And the postal company made the mistake, as they have a number of times in the past. I think actually it's planned by Bill so that he thinks I'll pay my bill, cause, his bill, because I'll be blind and not know what it is. Alrighty, I'm certain if I had been born with 20-20 vision and I had lost my eyesight only in the last few years, I would take it too seriously because I've seen that happen. But I was born with one-tenth normal vision and I always thought that was normal. Okay, go back to the gallery. Back to the gallery, all right. All right. Well, it doesn't take long to find out nothing is normal when it comes to George Covington. With limited vision, he studied at the University of Texas, then it was a law degree, a professorship at West Virginia University, practicing law in New York City, a stint at the Smithsonian in Washington, and in the 1980s found himself at the right hand of the vice president. For six or eight months, I was detailed to the staff of Jim Wright, who was then Speaker of the House. And a year later, I was Special Assistant to the Vice President of the United States. I just kept moving from job to job, a little closer to the top. And after I got to the White House, I couldn't figure out where else to go, so I left and came to Texas. In a roundabout way, George found Alpine and never looked back. These days, he writes a weekly column for the newspaper here, filled with George's special wit and satire. You see, somewhere along the way, this wordsmith discovered photography, and what is a hobby for most became the only way George could see. People with low vision can use photography as a seeing tool. And particularly today with digital photography being so easy to manipulate, then there's no reason the person with impaired vision shouldn't be able to see a world they're otherwise missing. With high contrast, particularly changing a portrait to a sketch, I get the elements that I need to see. I get to just see the nose, the lips, the cheeks, the head, but I can then see In the last 20 years, the only way I could see a face was to photograph it and manipulate the image. And now I don't see anything. It's just like when I step outside, it's like stepping into a fluorescent tube. No detail, no edges, no ups or downs, no color. Just a milky white fluorescence. Ready? I'm ready. All right, we're gonna go out the door. I got you. I always hate that thing where, don't you hear things better? If I had been with Custer, he'd have gotten wiped out before he got to the big horn. Here's the trick about guiding a blind person around. Okay. Uh, I take your elbow, okay. and I have my white cane here just to make sure where the curb is and what the depth of the curb is. And then I say something because I know the town very well. Why don't we go to the Catchlight Gallery? 
At times when his assistant Melissa has other duties, George thinks nothing of taking someone else's elbow. But like anything, there's a learning curve in leading the blind. If I were to ask you, what do I look like? What would you do? Well, I think that mainly it's like, I'd rather use my imagination. So I'd rather have you tell me than to do that old movie trick where you have to feel around the face. And all I'm thinking is, where's that hand been? And so I'd rather, you know, if you want to flatter yourself a little bit by simply saying that you're absolutely gorgeous with big green eyes and long blonde hair and you're a knockout, something like that. That's it. You just nailed it. That's because I'm so damn perceptive. Yes, you are. It comes with being blind. So I'm going to Roots. Roots, okay. It's It's got roots and limbs and things like yes, that. Willis yes, Willis Lejeune. Yes, Lejeune. That's Willis's. There we go. There we go. Now this is one of his that I've touched before, and it's incredibly intricate. Now he found this just out in the wilderness, and the first one I ever felt of his was much larger. It Let was, me take you. Oh, Here, okay. grab my elbow. Okay, gotcha. Ready? Gotcha. Is it this one right here, straight in front of you? Okay. Lean over a little bit, right okay. there. There we go. Yes. Is I'm that pretty, it? I'm pretty sure that was it. Yes. And I explained to Willis when he came up to me and said, you, you can touch all of my work, that I spent 10 years on the advisory committee of the Smithsonian Institution, and we trained snipers for people who touched art. <laughs> You but don't you, touch the art, but here he wants but you to. But here he wants you to, and it's really, it is a tactile experience. I love this place. I love the people out here and the place. There we go. Okie dokie. I couldn't pick out a better place to be blind than here. The last thing we expected to find out here in the West Texas desert is a totally blind tour guide, if only for a few hours. George Covington may have lost his eyesight, but he never lost his vision. Well, I, I am official. I am now a graduate of the George Covington School for Blind Mobility. Whatever that means. George, it's been a heck of a day. It's Thanks for spending it with us. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much. You have a lovely wife. Yes, I do. Thank you for not stealing her. That's right. Bye-bye, George. Be good now. <laughs> have a good time. Okay, where is everybody? Right here. Oh, oh, JR, Jan, where are you? Jan. Right here. Oh, oh, good, good, good. There you go. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, which are you going to give me a lift home? We can go oh, this way. You're, um, you're... Okay. Yep. All right. Wait. Come on, George. We're uh, going to lead out to the front. I'm reminded of something I learned in high school from the opening lines of a French novel, <laughs> and it was, he was born with a gift for laughter and a sense that the world was mad. And I've sort of lived that way all my life. I love that story. Me too, and we've got plenty more where that came from. Just click on the subscribe button and keep traveling with us.